Hi, it's Jess here from iJess.co.uk. Thank you for joining me today. So I'm going to bring you some ideas for using 6x6 paper and I thought we'd make some envelopes. So I was on a blog hop and the theme was envelope techniques. And I thought rather than use envelopes to make something, I'd make envelopes. So this is my prototype a nice little vintage looking envelope to to use in a journal um or you could if you had somebody that was into sort of vintage and shabby sheet you could put a little um gift card in there um she says looking for a card amazon free trial so you put a gift card in there um give it as a gift um yeah so very quick and easy to do. I have lined this one with book paper um, because the underside one one particularly nice. But if you have paper where the other, both sides are nice, then you haven't got a problem. You might have one sided paper um, and, um, and therefore you might want to sort of cover it. So I've got some six by six sheets here. Um, but... Uh, this is hand penned and I'm kind of making um, flower fairy uh, journal and I thought these might look work quite nicely in the journal. So I thought I might use um, some of these sheets and they're sort of quite nice patterns on the other side. I'm not sure about that one because you really want it to be non-directional. So... I am drawn to my purple one because, you know, I love a bit of purple. I like that one because it's got um, that sort of brown colour, which um, Cinnamon Cider name was escaping me. Um, so it's already partially sort of vintage-ish. I mean, obviously I'd have to ink this and things, but I thought that would work. And obviously because this is directional, that would be the inside and we'd keep the green as the outside. Likewise with this one, we'd have the yellow on the outside and this one we'd have the purple on the outside. So let's, let's get sort of started with it. So let's just do, um, I think I might give you sort of three different sizes um, to sort of work from. I think they look quite cool. Obviously, if you've got an envelope punch board, you can you can make envelopes really easy um, with that. But if you haven't got an envelope punch board, then you can do it with. I'm going to use a school board, but you could do it with folding um, if if you wanted to. So I want my envelope to sort of go that way. So I'm going to score at two inches and four and three quarters so that that will fold up like that and that one will fold down like that so you can't do this three inches tall I think two and three quarters which is what I've done there is about your maximum because you want these two flaps to overlap um, so that's my thinking there and then I'm giving it a three quarter of an inch margin on each side. So that is, that gives you this size of an envelope. Now you might want it a little bit narrower, which was one of my thoughts was to do it a little bit narrower. Um, and so for that, I thought that's, Let's cut it down. Um, so I might take an inch off and we'll cut it down to five inches. Make sure I've got the direction in the right way. Yeah, that way. Isn't it? So let's cut down to five inches and keep everything else the same. So now I've got a scrap that I need to use. So that's going to be the outside. So we'll go three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch. Just think that gives you a nice wide margin. That's the top, that's the bottom. 
so is it? it's really difficult to tell actually which way up it's supposed to be so two inches four and three quarters so that's giving us a slightly smaller envelope so it's going to be that wide so quite a nice dinky envelope quite like that we compare that to that and see the difference and then we might go might just let's just take Let's take half an inch off, see what it looks like with five by five. Take half an inch off. So that's the bottom. So that is the two inches. Why don't I go? Have a bigger flap at the top. No, I like I like I like the dimensions that I've got there. Four and three quarters. And then we'll go. Let's try half an inch. Now yeah, that'll be really wide, won't it? So we'll do the three quarters of it each side. Thinking as I go, thinking as I go. So that is all that bit done. So we're just going to fold and burnish all of these score lines. I think these might look really pretty. Obviously, I'm going to ink them. Just folded that, didn't I? Didn't actually burnish any of those. I can't believe I'm making three envelopes in one go. But I just like to give you options. And I say, not everybody's got an envelope punch board, so. I've still got one. I never got rid of it. And stamping up stopped selling it. I didn't get rid of it. Right. So we are going to cut these sides all the way down. So the two inch bit is your flap. And we're going to keep those for, for folding under. So you can use your trimmer or you could just use a nice long pair of scissors and just slice down that score line like so. And then give it a little bit of a notch there. And we'll do a little bit of a notch at the top. There we go. A little notch there. A little notch there. So... That is our basic envelope done. Couldn't be easier. Couldn't be easier. So that's your two inch one. This is your shorter one. Straight down. Little notch, little notch. Creating scraps. Which we might use in the decorating of the envelope. That might be quite cool. Quite like no waste projects. Projects. There we go. These little notch bits. You're not going to use those. Well, I'm not going to use those. I'm not saying you can't. If you can find a way of using those, I've done that wrong. 
because I wasn't concentrating. Pants. Um, so, alternative... Oh. I'm just going to go with it. Right. This was my favourite one as well because it was purple. Right. So that side's okay. But this side isn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of a bodge up. So cut it down to there. So I've got that side going under there. So slight gap there, but I'm sure you won't notice it. You hardly notice that at all. It'll be fine. There, we got through it. I think it's good if you see a slight mistake in the way of getting round it. There we go. So that is our envelope shapes. I want to round the corners because just gives your envelope a nice a nice look this doesn't like this don't like just DSP let's do two sheets together uh, you can hear that like six except that one quite aligned <gasps> Yeah, it's nearly right. Make sure they're together. That worked. Any bits that aren't quite right. I just, I just file off and we're sorted. So, there we are. So we want these to now look a little bit more vintage. They're too bright and pretty. If you're making something that's bright and pretty, then happy days. But I'm not. I'm not, so I'm going to get my little sheet there where I've previously done some blending with. I'm going to get some soft suede. For this one, I might use some cinnamon cider. I could use cinnamon cider on them all, to be fair. Just tend to default to soft suede. So, here we go. So, what I'm going to do is just go over this a little bit. So, immediately it's looking more vintage. I did a video not very long ago on how to make things look a bit more vintage. Inking was one of them. Uh, we don't have to go down much further. That one's sorted and then we need to do it on this side. And I love that this has got like a water a water wash effect because I think that's helping for the look of this. And it's picking up the scored lines quite well, so don't have to do too much inking there. So that's quite cool. Do need to go a little bit more around the edges. Where's my cinnamon cider spongy dauber? 
talk amongst yourselves. This one really needs replacing. I might just do uh, it on the edge like that. Really is beyond the peril. Going to use this one. Sides aren't bad, actually, but you can always do with a bit more. There we go, so that's all inked. I won't bore you by showing by inking those on camera, I'll do them off camera. But the next step is to do some stamping on it. Now, I have my favorite stamp sets for making things vintage just gonna close that for a minute so i've got my quiet meadow one i love those dots i love this faded script quite like the flower as well i think that's good on this one i think the feather's great i love a bit of foliage the butterfly's always good we've got that lovely little um scrolly thing there like that obviously i do love my script there lovely frame and um border and the foliage this is a new one so these are all like been using for donkeys these are my new ones from the new catalog there's some more faded type there this one I haven't used this much but actually i think this one would be good so this is my free one and um yeah I think it would work this oh, this is my favorite so i wanted this since the first saw the catalog and um it wasn't available on pre-order and um yeah so finally it right last week it should have arrived but they sent me the wrong thing so i got it this week love 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 it um so oh to die for wonderful these are nice i love that uh, great border so dies to go with it so it will cut out these stamped images it will cut that out not that you really need a die to cut that out to be fair and then it's got these extra ones so that scroll is lovely and that's what i've put on this behind there and then i've put it on the back there how stunning is that and i've stamped it with this just love it so i've got postmark and that looks a little bit like it could have been an address so absolutely love 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 this set and um and then you've got sort of i say other foliage bits and this flower which i think this is supposed to be like that it's i'm not even going to say it because i'll say it wrong and um so it's that flower is what what it's named after i think it's that flower i don't know not a botanist so I've got them ready mounted to um to stamp around um i might carry on with cinnamon cider on this one i might i might go to my old favorites on that one so on this side of the envelope i want a little postmark there could do a fake stamp actually um as well um could do a fake stamp with some of these scraps couldn't i i've got these scraps could do a little stamp where's my postage stamp punch um it's too big but that's fine we'll cut it down um got prettier ones should we have one with a bit of flower on so don't really matter does it so all i'm gonna do Use this. There we go. So we've got postage sort of shape on two sides. Let's put it on the other two sides. There we go. Not the best shape stamp in the world. It's 
a bit too tall that way. Let's take a bit off. Proper little mini stamp that. Yeah, that'll do. That will do. Put you over there. Give it a bit of a... A bit of that. Let's go around the edges. So we can stick it on there. And then we can stamp the postmark over the top. Perfect. Might go a bit darker for that. I might go early espresso over the top. Only espresso stamped off. There we go. Now it looks a little bit more like a stamp. In the corner, it's a smaller envelope, so cutting it down like that is, is good. I'm going to do this. It's like a partial ledger. I'm going to put it there as if it was the address. on there there we go not straight don't matter um quite like those little labels so what i did was I cut a load and i did some in some in black some in early espresso some in soft suede and that can sort of get stuck on as if it's a bit of a label there, quite like that. I think we'll stick him on there as well. Can't remember what I did on the other one, remind myself. Yeah, I had him sort of stuck in the corner. I might stick him there. I also went over with my favourite dots to give it an old look. Before we stick that on, let's do a bit of dotage. And we may as well do it on every bit. And on the inside as well. Cool. And then I'm going to going to stick that on there and I thought he had one of those swirls cut out ready I did Maybe stick a swirl in the corner. Maybe get out my... Oh, I'll put it on this. Maybe just have a little bit of that. On the back there. Oh, it was that I wanted to do. God, can't get the staff. I wanted a bit of text on that. Just so it's got a little bit of texture on it. And that 
that's the that side of the envelope taken care of. Looking down. Feel I need some in there. So now, now we're ready on the front. We're all inked everywhere, so we can actually now stick it down. Might just do a little bit of inking on this bit. Just so if you open the envelope slightly, it looks dark. By doing your envelope with a flap like this, it means that whatever you put in it will go all the way to the edge. Because you could have cut it and just had straight sides. But didn't want to do that so now we've got to think about the fastening for it as well and I used this punch to to fasten the bit of cardstock so I might do that again not that I've got the cardstock out because nothing like being ready is there so I might, might put a bit of cinnamon cider on the front. Clean that in the most unconventional way. Stick a bit of that on there. Stick a bit up there. Stick a bit on there. Change my ink now. Gonna use my little actually that's what I could put on the top where I thought it needed some in. Yep. That's quite cool. Um, got this flower. Quite liked that as well. really is do what you want so I want a bit I think we'll go maybe a bit of Sahara sand something very light that's crumpy so you can hear on the scraps that's too small so got a bit of a scrap um and let's find the punch. So I'm gonna, gonna do it to the straight bit in the punch. And then I'm gonna feed it back in.
get it straight. And then punch it so we've got it a bit shorter. So that's on there like that to hold it in place. So now we need to do a bit of inking around the edges. And the prototype, it was just a scrap on my desk, as you do. And it was embossed. So I, I said, I don't think that embossing folder's current anymore. Don't even think I've got it. Um, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to emboss this um, with, um, I might use type one because it's um because i like it so i'm gonna get that embossed so that's it embossed there we go so i'm going to do a bit more inking on that to get the embossing out so that the ink picks up the raised bits. Looks a little bit like an elephant, doesn't it? Right, so I stuck that down like so, so that you got your tucked up bit. So let's go across here, like so. better I think there was a little bit a little bit there of glue blocking that so now I need to spread that and now everything's going to stick to this mat isn't it so Eyeball the middle about there. There we go. And I really liked what I did there to go on the top. I need to cut another one of them swirls for that. Stick one of them on. Might ink that a bit more. So the die gives it a little bit of a border. This one I actually cut out on my scan and cut. Dead lazy, you could just do it with a pair of scissors. But there we go. Oh, I did stamp and die cut this flower. No, I don't want that. I want the swirl. I'm going to die cut a couple of swirls so I've got some in stock. There we are. So I've got a few squirrels, squirrels, swirls. They're done. Keep them in a pot on my desk. I'll probably use those most days. So... Just need the one for now. And I quite like the look of that. Underneath there like that. So I also quite like the look of having something on that. Still got a bit of ink on this. Mm, marginal. Very marginal amount of ink there. that looks don't know if you can see 
but it's got a little bit on there. I don't know. Right, I've just had a notification. I've got 10 minutes before I've got to be doing something else. So what I will be doing is watching my friend do some live crafting on Facebook. So whilst I'm doing that, I will do the other envelopes in much the same way. And then I will show you them all afterwards. And then I will think about what I'm going to put on the inside. If this is going to be like a, a journaling spot. You know, some hidden journaling in a journal. So, there we go. Rather messy desk now. Let's uh, whip that off. So, we've now got a cleaner sheet. So, I'll do these off camera. So, that was prototype. And then this was a nice bright piece of paper made to look a little bit more vintage. And I think that might look quite nice in with my flower fairies because there's going to be colour in my flower fairy one. And uh, I think this will fit in it quite nicely. So I shall come back with these finished. Okay, so that was an enjoyable hour. I enjoyed that and I made the other two envelopes um, whilst I did it and I made some little journaling cards to go inside. So that's my Highland Heather one. I used um, a little scrap there for the stamp quite like how that turned out and I kind of went followed the same I didn't see the point of reinventing the wheel and then I went through my flower fairy book and I got a nice scabacious fairy um, I quite liked the flowers and the colour to go with to go with this and I have just glued it on some brown packaging paper and um, put some coffee dyed um, grid paper on this on there and um, yeah so that's all ready to go in my flower fairy journal when I when I make it I'm making lots of ephemera um, and then I'll then I'll probably do the journal and then for this yellow one again I got a nice a little bit of the a yellow flower there for the little stamp and um, I found a nice flower fairy this is the Jack go bed at noon go to bed at noon fairy um, I could have gone to bed at noon today to be honest I did it in exactly the same way so I am just going to show you how I did them to fit the envelope so I went through my flower fairy book and I picked out I thought the lime tree fairy would go with the green and when you open it up I thought actually no I thought that one I thought that one because I thought they went quite well with the browns on the inside so that's the one I want these are kind of the sizes that they are and I sort of looked and went yeah They'll fit slightly too wide, so I'm going to sort of rip it so that it's um, is slightly slightly smaller. So we're all right on the on the length. So just rip it down. If you've watched my other videos where I've done some stuff with the flower fairies, this is how I rip them out, and then I made sure. I got the word of what it's called, just because it'd be nothing worse, would it, than 
looking through a fairy fairy a flower fairy journal and not knowing which one it was. Some of them it's quite easy, like I know that's a sycamore tree, so I'd probably be able to guess that one. The Jack Go Bed at Noon one, never would have got that in a million years. So got that one. Usually when you cut it out, it's on the complete other side of the other one. But this one isn't so they do vary a little bit in size i'm just gonna move that one there now i need this so now i can see yeah no problem there height wise width wise we do want it slightly smaller because as well so i'm going to come inside that frame line i'm going to stick it to some brown packaging which will be slightly bigger than this so we want this slightly smaller. So how are we how are we diddling with this? Probably could do with coming in a little bit, a little tiny itchy bit more. So I'm gonna put my ruler just over a bit more, press down really hard, and then you should be able to rip off a smidge. Yeah. That's lovely. And actually, now I've taken the frames off both sides, I'm going to take them off the top and the bottom. Don't like them. I think they should all be framed or no frame. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do nicely. So, I'm then going to ink round the edges. There we go. Now then I've got some brown packaging paper and I'm going to stick this to my brown packaging paper. Let's see. I need to trim any more off just a tad I thought it was a little bit wide so a little smidgen that was none jazz let's see if that was enough yeah perfect how cool does that look next to that paper Love it. Oh, can't quite see. There we go. Love it. I think it's just perfect. Don't need that anymore. I can put that away. So, what I like to do is give him a little bit more of a colour. And sometimes, yeah, I'm going to yeah, I split up the words. So either split them all up or just, I think I'm going to split them all up. So I've got cascading down the side. It's not really cascading, is it? It's just been stuck down the side, really. But I think that, I think that's quite cool. I like that. So going to grab that with my tweezers, stick it down. There we are. And then on the back, I've got some coffee dyed um, squared paper. So just go along there. So this would be a journaling spot. I like them in envelopes because I don't like my handwriting. So it's nice that they're in an envelope. And um, it can be hidden away. I'm not spoiling the beauty that I am creating by my nasty little scrawl. So 
just ink around all the edges. Put a little bit of little bit of this and that on it. And what I forgot to do was ink round the edges of this. There we go. That's it done. Already go in the envelope. Looks a treat in there. And that's it. That's my little ideas with with envelopes. Getting a nice little clean sheet here, so you can see what I've done. Go, okay, get over there. Can't see any mess now. There we go. That's my three envelopes. That was prototype. And um, I haven't done a journaling card in here. As I say, I've used book paper on the inside of that. I didn't like the other side of the piece of paper. So that's an option for you. Um, didn't put a stamp on that one. Um, but yeah, I really like them. And uh, I like the fact that I've used colourful paper. I think that will go nicely in Flower Fairy Journal. I'm getting quite a bit of ephemera now for my Flower Fairy Journal. I look forward to putting that together and I've got enough. So I hope you like that. I'll link down below to everything that I've used that you can buy from my shop. Stamp sets, the punch, bossing folder, inks, um, the paper, obviously the Flower Fairy book. That was from a charity shop. And um, yeah, that was just so all packaging. All right then, so see you all again soon and um, stay safe. Bye.